You're listening to David Yanez Ministries Healing Services, brought to you by David Yanez Ministries.net. To do, even if it don't make sense. Come on, even if it don't make sense, you just be faithful, and God knows what He's doing. I never made an app in my life. Praise God. I made websites. I've done all this other stuff. But I had the Salvation Army guy, and I forget his name. He's the president of the Salvation Army. Not really good interview host, huh? I forgot his name. Oh, Guy Nolan. That was his name. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and uh, he, he, was, he was president for, he's been still president. And we're talking about it. His great-grandfather started the Salvation Army. And he's all excited because he's being able to take it to the next generation, next level, next level of faith. Well, we're sitting there, and I go, hey, I remember Salvation Army, you know, like, dang, 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 a band playing, all one man band playing, and someone preaching the gospel, right? Or a choir group walking around, pre- pre- singing the songs in the streets. Who remembers that? Yeah, see, I'm dating myself, but I remember that. But you know what? He told me that the uh, street corner was no longer the corners that we live in and drive in and walk by, but the street corner was the Internet. And he had hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of people that were willing to share that they're going through something or wanted to discuss that they were having issues and some things that they weren't even, you know, wanted to make public. They were able to talk to someone anonymously and get prayer and get, and get some help and get deliverance. We don't need to know who they are. Amen. We just know God's moving and her helping them. Well, you know, that was five years ago. That was five years ago at the NRB in, in Nashville, Tennessee, that I interviewed him. And I'm going to tell you today, it's no longer the Internet. I was telling Daniel this earlier. It's apps. Apps. On any given day, I want you to drive by this building, you'll see a herd of little Pokemon guys out there playing Pokemon in front of our sign. They're gone in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. <laughs> they just crowded up. I had to kick them out last time. They're all mad. But apps. Every time your kid's on, the, on, the, on their phone, what are they doing? They're on an app. Every time you're on Facebook, you're in an app. So God, I, I got that revelation last summer, and I, and I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to make an app. I, what kind of app do I want? I want a prayer app. That's what the Lord wants, a prayer app. So I put D, DY in prayer, prayer hub, and you can download it on Android, on, on, on any of the Apple devices. And I tell you what, we got testimony today about that. We had maybe several hundred downloaded. And my vision was this. I seen Esther and Mordecai changing a nation through prayer corporately. And I said, well, what if I'm in Walmart or I'm going over there and I'm in I'm all different stores or I'm out eating with my family and someone needs prayer? I still want to be available, but I not, might not want a phone call at that time. Well, the app just pops right in. Text comes right in. Prayer hub. You open it. You read the prayer. And on your own time, you just pray. You ain't got to do anything else but pray. And the people can can send a text, send a video or uh, send a text and send a video or send a picture. That's simple. Made it simple for everything. Simple for me. Not much labor on my part to keep it running. And guess what? We have about 600 people, 700 people that are using it. Praise God. And I, got, and I had one lady in the middle of the night send a prayer request, and she was ready to kill herself. She said, I don't know if anyone's out there, but if someone can just pray for me, I won't kill myself right now. And I happen to be up just working on the computer, and in, in my email, it also comes in for me because I'm the administrator. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Let me get back on this one real quick. And I prayed for her. I never heard from her. But I believe God kept her from doing that. Amen. Amen. But we had a testimony come in um, just this, this month on the 11th of August. And it was a lady named Susan. She said that she emailed us a few months back before the summer that her, that her dad was sick. And she asked us to pray. And, of course, there's, like I say, I don't know how many of us prayed to have the app on our phone. But I prayed. I know a few others possibly prayed. She said that her dad went to, for his checkup and an operation, after an operation, and he was completely free of cancer. Come on. You don't have to fear cancer. You don't have to fear diabetes. You don't have to fear high cholesterol. These things are not what God wants us to fear. Amen? We're not supposed to have any fear. He did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Amen? So when... when when that testimony came through, I was excited. Because you know what? How many of us just get an idea? Amen? You don't know if anyone's going to use it, anyone's going to do that. You don't know how many people need it. Well, I looked at the app, and I looked at the stats. We have people in Australia. We have people in China. We have people in Africa and in India. We have people in Pennsylvania, California, that have downloaded the app. And that are praying. 
and that send requests. When one guy, I mean, some pictures you could just send us, but someone just keep them and just tell us in text, please. Yeah, a picture of them all mangled up in the hospital. I'm like, we don't need to see that one. Just a, a text would be fine. I'm in the hospital. I need prayer. That just scared me. I had to like, I had to censor that one. That's the only picture I had to censor. I'm like, whoa, too much. Anyway. We know you need prayer. We'll pray for you. But anyway, that is something that I want to tell you because I believe there's people here that want to start something. Anything God wants you to do, do it. Amen. Who cares if you fail? Right. Right. You reach someone. Would you count failure? God counts victory. Yeah. Would you count wasted time? God counts a soul. Yes. And you just do it. I am, I guess, I, I mean, I've always been one, and Pastor can testify about this. I've always started something. I've always done something. Something new was coming up. Because I, I have my, my friend, he's my barber, and he's also a pastor, and he's like, you don't let the grass grow underneath your feet, boy, do you? <laughs> and it's true. you got to constantly be busy about my father's business. Amen? I tell my kids that all, that, that all the time. I'm in my father's business. What's the business? Saving souls. Healing people. Yeah. Miracles to bring them to Christ. Amen. The miracles aren't for me to wonder and say, oh, look what I did. The miracles are me to say, God did that. Yeah. God did that. Yeah. God did that. Yeah. And for them to come to Jesus. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, when, we, when we're out there doing the work of the Lord, I'm at these conferences. I can tell when people come in and they're full of faith. They're full of faith. They're supercharged. They're ready to receive their miracle. Those are the ones that are just like you that drove all the way here. They came here expecting God to do something. Amen. Today's sermon, I can I title it. It's called Miracles Will Happen. Amen. Amen. Miracles will happen. I got to stay in front of the camera. I got to remember the camera. Too. <laughs> Miracles will happen when what? When we just believe. Amen. We just believe. Yeah. It's not hard to believe. You just believe that God's going to do it. You just believe God's going to make it happen. You just believe what Jesus said. Just believe. Just believe. I think in the, in the um, what is it, the Amplified Bible, it says, if you really believe. That's powerful. Some would say, yeah, I believe God could do it. No, believe he will do it for you. Amen. Right. Believe he will do it for you. When, you know, the Bible says this. We got to come to God. We got to know. Know that he loves us. Amen. Amen. Right. You, you can't come to God without confidence that he loves you. Right. The Bible says to boldly come into the throne room of God. Amen. How can you boldly come in if you don't know you're supposed to be in there? Right. He didn't say just go look outside the door and say, uh, can I come in? No, no, you're a child of God. Yeah. No, you are a son and daughter of the high king. Yeah. Know that you have an inheritance, not by any work that you have done. Praise God but by the fullness of Christ. Amen? There's nothing that we do spiritually that we have done, but by God's grace and the fullness of Jesus. Jesus did it for us that we can get forward. Amen? So when you believe, the Bible says in 1 John 3, 21 through 22, and whatsoever we ask, we receive him because we keep his commandments and do those things which are pleasing in his sight. It's not hard to follow God when you're believing. Amen? Amen? It's not hard to walk with God when you're believing. Remember the story of, of Jairus in the Bible? He came to Jesus. When he came to Jesus, he was following the, he was following the procession, basically, that was Jesus walking through the, through the crowds. And he came to let him know right away that, hey, my daughter is sick. And what did Jesus say? I'll come with you. His faith moved Jesus already. He, he, he could see that he knew just to get a hold of the master. But then what happened at that time? The lady with the issue of blood touched Jesus' garment, distracted Jesus, say, for, I don't know, five minutes, ten minutes. I don't know. I, I don't know how long she was trembling, the Bible says, worried that she did something. You know, it's like she, dis, she distracted Jesus just enough to, to let time lapse. Well, when they figured out that the woman with the issue of blood was who she was and that his anointing went and touched her, you know, Jesus said, your faith made you whole. Amen? Amen. But what do you think Jairus is thinking? Woman, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> my, my daughter is sick and dying. How many of us got like that before? Come on. No, 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 no. She's been like that for 38 years. Don't worry about her. Come on. My daughter is sick. Come on. 
But I want to tell you right now, when you just believe, there's no such thing as time and distance. Amen? There's no such thing as too late. Come on. You believe. You believe that God will do it. Well, Jairus already believed. Amen? He already knew that Jesus was going to do it. He's just going on the pathway to get it done. I mean, how many have been there? Process is happening. We're all excited. Then, boom, we get knocked over the side. Come on. I've been there many times. Many times. I think I, th- I told you the last time, maybe two healing services ago, when they called me about the Sid Roth show, I was all excited, all excited, getting everything, thinking, oh, what am I going to wear? I didn't own a suit at that time. I own four now, so, but I didn't own a suit at that time. And I'm like piecing together this, piecing together that. And I'm like, Lord, I, I, was, I was pretty bad. My wife, I'm, my wife will tell you, it takes me longer to pick my clothes I'm going to wear <laughs> than, than actually get dressed and leave the place. So I'm over there picking stuff two weeks in advance. But what they do is they, they um, don't tell anyone. I'll, I'll edit this out. What they do is they buy the, they, they'll buy the tickets for your airline ticket, right? And you'll be all excited. You got a confirmation from United. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going. But they, they buy it with insurance that they can cancel it at any time. They have like 72 hours before the actual flight to cancel it. I didn't know this. And all of a sudden, there was something in my book that they didn't approve. And, and we, we, you know, I'm a Bible teacher. I believe in teaching the Bible. I don't add to it. I don't take it out of it. It's not in the Word. I'm not going to teach it. Praise God. I teach the Word of God, and I have good, 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 you know, clarification of it in my spirit. And that's what I teach. And it was something on forgiveness. And, and, and Sid's like, well, that's going to confuse the Jewish people how you're teaching it. Now he goes, my... My entire staff thinks that you're right, but it's my show. <laughs> so we had to, he wanted to change it in my book. And we came, I came to agreement that if we change it a certain way, that the, what I was presenting was still being presented and the other stuff didn't need to be in the book. So, you know, it was still good. It wasn't like I let it go, but it, it was something that we just restructured it to sound just like how they wanted it. And it was good. But at that moment, I didn't know for, two, for a week if I was going I was like, man, this thing's taking off. Praise God. We're going to be on this show. It's going to be awesome. And then all of a sudden, you're not coming. <laughs> Whose emotions have been like that? Because who's been there? That's life. But what did John Osteen used to tell us? Fight, 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 fight. When, they get, when you get hit, get up. Get up and fight, 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 fight life through. Fight it through. That's what we have to do. I think today we've been so, and I'm not talking about this group in general. I'm just saying we're too light. We're too light. We, we, we think that we're, we get hit, we're all bruised, and we're, we're all, no, I, I can't do this. This ain't God's will. Well, when has God's will been an easy task? Praise God. Amen. Come in. It's, it's, you got to push through the hard times. Just because hard times come up, don't say that it's not God's will. Because anything in life, in the natural or in the supernatural, is worth fighting for. And you got to fight. It took me four years to build the, the missions ministry. Three and a half years where I got back from building a missions ministry to build a healing ministry. And I don't think it's going to take long to build this on-the-road ministry of healing. Because we've already, we've already created, we've already perfected it here so we know what we can do out there. And I tell you what, I'm going to fight Fight, fight, fight to see breakthrough. Because it touches my heart tremendously. And I know it touches God's heart tremendously when I see people come up that have been suffering for so long. And when they come up and God instantly heals them. We had a guy standing right here. Remember, Jose, those, those two tall young men? They came up and I think they were, they were just checking if I was a real healing minister from what we heard at the dinner table. And then the guy's arm couldn't even move it much. Came up here. And he's like, my, my arm's not working. It doesn't work. It hasn't worked for two or three years. He was in an accident. And I was like, okay. Touched his arm. His arm started moving. He was healed. And he, he looked at both arms to check which one it was. I tell you, God will move mightily on your behalf when you give it the praise to him. When you give him the glory, God will move. Where does he say in the word? He will not share. Hid the glory with anyone. He will not share. That's his. He's a jealous God. Old Testament still counts. Come on, people. Old Testament still counts. I'm telling you. So when, you, when, you, when you're out there and you feel like you've been knocked down, get up. 
And how do you get up? You call someone that can pray. Don't be ashamed. In Joel, it says, my people shall never be ashamed. Why? Because we got to stand up and say, God, even if it looks to the world that I'm a mess, I'm your mess. <laughs> I'm your mess, and you're going to take care of it. You're going to fix it. You're going to change it. You're going to make it happen for me. And I tell you what, what happened with, with Jairus was this, and we know the scripture. We know what it says, that, he, that Jesus went to his house, even though they came and told him that his daughter was dead. Jesus looked at him and said, you just got to believe. She just sleeps. So he, he, he had to have a decision right there. How much know that we have to make a decision yep. to believe? Yes. We got to say, is this what God is telling me? Pray that I get a lapel sometime. <laughs> this thing's about to tangle me up. And we have to believe. There's an instant that you have to believe that God's going to do it. Amen. That instant is now. Amen. When the, the lady that, with the issue of blood seeing Jesus walking by, that was the instant that she had to believe. Yeah. I mean, how hard was it to even get to Jesus? You talk about agony and pain. The Bible said she was bleeding. So she was an outcast. She was an outcast. And she's working herself through the crowd, and the crowd's moving because she's an outcast. She's ashamed. She's embarrassed. Who's ever been like that? And then all of a sudden, she knows she just got to get near him because she believes. She just believed. And she touched him. And what did Jesus say? Your faith has made you whole. We have to just believe. I don't care what kind of sickness it is. We must just believe. Believe that God will do it. I'm pounding this because God wants it pound inside you. He wants it in your spirit. If you get it in your spirit, it's going to happen. If you get it in your spirit, it's going to shake up whatever's been blocking you. Because the Bible says this. That he did not want us to be sick. Amen? Amen. If you read in Exodus, the will of God is for you to be healed. Amen? Miracles happen when we agree that the will of God is for you to be healed. The will of God is for you to be healthy. Above all, I pray that you prosper and be in health. Health means this. It ain't hard to get up out of bed. It ain't hard to do your daily works that you have to do or whatever shopping you like to do. <laughs> it isn't hard. That's God's promise. And that will of God is this right here. That the Bible says in Exodus 15, 26. I read this in every healing service. And, and it said, If thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do which is right in his sight, and will give ear unto his commandments, and keep our stature, I will not put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Yeah. Do you diligently seek him? Are you seeking him? Yes. Do you follow his ways? Have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? Yes. Then here healing is for you. There's no buts. No difference. Salvation and healing are no different. Not one of us would question a person that came up here and gave their heart to Jesus. We'd all be excited and doing little cartwheels. Well, that's what they do now when one person gets saved in church. Let's get like, a, like 30 or 40 or 50 or even 100 people. Then let's do some cartwheels. Amen. We need to get excited about souls. Amen. We need to get excited about soul winning again. Soul winning is something that we need to be excited about because that's what we're put on this planet to do. People can get to heaven being sick. Amen. It's no problem, but they can't get to heaven if their soul's not changed. But not one of you would challenge or question that person that came up and gave their heart to Jesus. And that person would not doubt, would not think about it, but know that he is saved. Are right? Because it's accepted. It's an accepted practice. We accept that if he went up there, he said the sinner's prayer, he is saved. But what if he came up and you laid hands on him and you said you're healed? There's no difference. The same belief that you're saved is the same belief that you're healed. There's no difference. T.O. Osborne used to say the only difference is between your ears. That's the only difference. We have to believe that that's the will of God. Amen. I want to talk to you about grace. God put this on my heart today about grace. How many of us know that the grace is something we did not earn? Amen. 
You know, there used to be an old joke with the pastors that say, you'll get to heaven and you'll be like, whoa, how did you get in here? You know, it's like when you see someone that's saved and in heaven and you're like, grace. Grace. It's, it's unmerited. It's unexplainable. It's equally given to you as it's given to me. It's no difference. It's given to God gives it to us freely. Freely he gives us grace. Freely we're under his grace. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, 7. Now to each one of us, grace has been given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Christ was a gift to every one of us. Amen. Romans 1, 16, 17 through 16, say, or 16 through 17 says, From his fullness we have received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't want you looking back at your life. I don't look, want you looking back at failures, looking back at mistakes. You may have walked out of the will of God at one time. I don't want you thinking about that anymore. Because God don't think about it anymore. God says, I gave you grace. I gave you forgiveness. Why do you keep bringing it up? You're listening to David Yanez Ministries Healing Services, brought to you by davidyanezministries.net. He said, he said um, do you have a husband? No, I, I don't have a husband. And Jesus already, already knew all this. Well, that's true. You've had five. You can't hide it from God. But even Jesus said, go away, sin no more. You're forgiven. Didn't bring it up again. Didn't bring it up again. When God forgives you, it's done. I've seen so many people tortured, torturing their life, torturing their, their family because they can't let go of the past. And a lot of times if you live in the past, it's really hard to get your faith excited. I'm not saying that it just because you don't believe that God's given you grace that you can't get healed. That I'm not saying that. But I'm saying if you live in the past and in disappointment, it's hard to get excited about what God can do for you. I've seen so many depressed people. I mean, you look, you look at the television. It's so, so amazing how many movie stars and athletes have killed themselves because they were depressed. You think, oh, they got money. They got popularity. That ain't nothing. Without the peace of God in your spirit. Three years ago, an Academy Award filmmaker from Paris, he won the Academy Award for the first time, the Oscars. Excited young man, two months later, jumped off a bridge in front of a train. One of the most successful goalkeepers for Germany. Played on the, the, the Bundesleagas, one of the biggest successes. They couldn't find him, he jumped in front of a train. An actress that was on several movies from, U, from the UK here, and she was on some US ones, I think Spider-Man was one of them, and they, their family went looking for her, successful, getting parts, whenever she went out, she'd get the part. They found her hanging in the, in the cabin of the cottage, the family cottage, two weeks where they couldn't find her. People are depressed, and those are just stories that we've seen of people that were successful. I guarantee you right now, there are so many more people that aren't successful, that are going through the same hell. We have to push past the defeats, push past all the things that have dragged us down. Amen? And we got to know that we're forgiven. Everybody say, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. forgiven. And we got to forgive others. Amen? I always bring up this story because it goes right with it every time. When I was in Kenya, there was this lady... And I'm over there preaching in a soccer field. That's actually the banner that was hanging on the, from so fits of the soccer goal. And uh, sometimes I'll get my soccer ball here and I'll kick it against the wall because <laughs> it's the size of a soccer goal. But uh, she was over there. She made these, these arrangements from this um, catering arrangements for a business. And she borrowed money. She used her rent money. She borrowed people's uh, equipment and everything to make all this food. Well, guess what? The company never came and picked up the food. They never paid her, and now she was in debt, and she couldn't pay for the kids' school because you got to pay for school in Africa. She couldn't pay for the food to feed them anymore. She couldn't pay her rent. Well, she called her sister on the phone, and she went over there, and she said, you need to feed my kids a sandwich. I'm not coming home tonight. She took a knife from the kitchen and went to the soccer field. She said, she said I'm going to kill myself in the soccer field because they'll find my body in the morning when they play the matches. Well, she went over there, and she was going to commit suicide. As soon as she got to the field, she see my banner hanging on the soccer goal. She was going to kill herself. 
And she looks to the left and we're preaching the gospel. We're preaching the gospel. We're preaching the gospel. And God said, switch to forgiveness. And I just start talking about forgiveness. I start talking about if you have any odds with anyone, before you take your offering to God, you go and put it aside. That's what the word of God said. Go make peace. Go make peace. Because when you come back and there's been peace made, God's going to bless you. God's going to bless you. God's going to bless you. And I tell you what, she came up there when I did the altar call. She prayed for forgiveness for her brother and her, her dad and other people and even the businessman that didn't pick up the merchandise or the food. And, she, and then three days later, she came back to our service on a Friday night and we're having testimony night. She came over there and she was so excited about God. Amen. She gave her heart to the Lord that night. She prayed for forgiveness. Her whole countenance was changed. God can change things in an instant when you forgive. She walked up there and she was testifying. I called my security to bring my bags. They brought my bags. I got some shillings and I threw them at her feet. I was on, I was on the outside on the bottom of the platform. So I just threw them like that. And then the, the pastor in Africa, they're all the same. He picks it up and counts it. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> and he goes, oh, good offering, good offering. And not for you. I pointed to her. And he's like, oh, okay. Yes, brother. And then so he went away. So... He went over there and he, and he gave it to her. And, I, and then all of a sudden, it was like the price is right. Remember the old show when, when they all used to come running down? I don't know if they do it now. But there are people all over, all over the campus that we're, the soccer field we're at were running up and just throwing shillings, just running up and throwing shillings because she was testifying, telling us of what happened. And when I heard her testimony, it moved me and God moved the people. They had a yellow five gallon bucket, like the ones you get at Home Depot pressed down and shaken over that we handed to her. But that's what God does. My security team, of course, I had them escort her home to make sure she got home with her money. It's Kenya anywhere. We have to, Nairobi. So we have to do that. You have to do that. We're in the, sl we're in the slums. When I go over there to Africa, I go to India, I don't go to the prettiest places. Praise God. I mean, I go to like the it's, it's, it's the ghetto. It's the, it's the slums. It's the place where nobody wants to go. And I'm, pre I'm preaching there and reaching those people. And, and I tell you what, that's where I see God doing the most because they have nothing else. But when you forgive, God can change things. Change things for her. Well, she came back and testified on a Sunday in and, and the Sunday service where I was preaching. She said that she had enough money for that offering to pay off all her rent for the year. Praise God. To pay for her kids' school for the year. To reimburse everyone that she owed. And to buy more equipment for her business. That is what God does. I tell you, when God moves like that, it's amazing. When God moves of people that understand about grace and forgiveness, forgiveness is so important. I'm not saying because you don't forgive that you're sick. Don't get me wrong. I'm saying that if you don't forgive, it's hard to get blessed. It's hard to get blessed. Come on. It's, I know it's hard for some of y'all to take in, but it's hard to be blessed when you don't forgive. It's hard. Amen. One thing, one more thing, a couple more things before we finish here. Miracles will happen when you stop listening to fear. When you stop listening to fear. How do we know we can listen to fear? How do we know it can affect you? Let's talk about Job real quick. Job talks about this in an invasion. The scripture says, Job says this in Job 3, 25. For the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me. And that which is afraid of has come unto me. Job feared. Job was worried. Job, there was something that scared him. And he was worried about that happening. And the more you think of it, the more you ponder on it, the more you give it life, it begins to get legs. It begins to grow and it begins to be birthed into your life. You got to cast down every wicked imagination. The word of God says every high thing that comes, that comes against you in authority. You come against it in faith. Amen. You don't let fear grapple you. When fear starts taking you over and starts coming after you and you start worrying, guess what? If you feed fear, you're going to get what fear has. Right. But if you feed faith, come on. If you feed faith, you're going to get what faith has. Amen. If you fear you're not going to make it, let me tell you, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. If you fear that you're not going to have enough money, guess what? You're not going to have enough money. 
If you fear that, that no one's gonna, you're never going to get in your ministry, guess what? You're never going to get in your ministry. If you fear it and you, and you start giving it life, but instead if you turn around and start speaking faith. How do you speak faith? How do you speak faith? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen. You start speaking faith words. Jesus is the author and the finisher of my faith. You start standing up. Know the word of God. Know the word of God. When you have faith, you can do anything. You know, when I was in, in Wisconsin, there was this little, this, this little young boy. He's, I guess, about 20 or so. He came running up to me. His face was like stone. I know some of you heard this. His face was like stone. Just stone. And I'm sitting there. And I preached on this. I preached on fear, battling fear. And his fear was he was afraid how everybody would think of him. So no matter what the surgeries they did for him, they only could fix one side. The doctor sent him home and said they couldn't do no more. I didn't know that until after I prayed for him. So while he was in line in Wisconsin, I tell you what, when a church, when a whole church is in agreement for healings and miracles, it catches on fire. And we had some amazing miracles there. He's one of them. And I went over there and his face was like stone. And I touched it. And it, it like, it pricked me. It did. And he's like, I want to be healed. He just cried. And I go, okay. He goes, make me normal. I go, God's going to do more than that, my, my son. He's going he's to do a miracle right now. And I just asked, I asked the pastor for some oil. Well, she popped it like champagne for some reason. And it all came pouring out of my hands. I catch it with both my hands. Cup of oil. Literally a cup of oil. And I went and I just, I slapped him. I, I was acting like Wigglesworth that night. I slapped him with both hands. And I said, God, I want to bless you, boy. Wham! I hit his face. And you know what? His face turned like Play-Doh. And I started to shape it. I started to move it. I started, it wasn't prickly anymore. It started to be a little rough, then a little smooth. And I kept working it and working it and working it. And I looked at him and go, you want me to make you a supermodel? He goes, yes, make me a supermodel. <laughs> and then I, then, I, then I let go. And I go, go look at yourself in the mirror. He ran to the mirror. And we knew when he seen it. He seen his healing. He was healed. He was screaming, hallelujah, hallelujah. And he came running back and he goes, fix my smile. I just touched his face and I fixed, and his smile started to go, to, you know, because it's been stretched like that. It just started to move back down, back to where it was. But I tell you what, we got to believe like that. Amen. We got to just believe that God can do it. We got to get excited about what God can do for us and jump up and get it. We can't have any fear that comes, any fear that keeps us from us. Any fear that keeps us away from what God wants. Amen. Any fear like that. It's, it's, it's crazy. There was this little girl in that same conference. She came to me. And this is, this is a story that just touches my heart big time. She came to me and said, I can't sleep at night. So I'm thinking, oh, she's having some problems, you know, sleeping, whatever. And, and I was like, sure. And I go, well, why can't you sleep at night? Because a, a demon sits beside me and tells me it's going to kill me. I'm like, well, that would make me not want to go to sleep either. Right? So I'll go... <laughs> So I'm like, really? And then she started telling me, and I started finding out things about what was going on. And I'm like, darling, so does this demon always come? He's here with me right now. And I look to the side, and there's a shadow right beside her. And I, and I told her, well, how long has it been following you? For two years. She said she goes and hides in her closet, and she doesn't get no sleep. Her grades have gone straight down because she's not sleeping. All oh, that woke up a holy roar in my body. Come on. I was ready. This is it. I go, uh-uh. This ain't happening no more. And I was like, you made the mistake of coming. I'm telling every spirit right now that is it not God's anointed spirit. Y'all made the mistake of coming tonight. Amen. Amen. And I, I spoke to her. and I looked over her and I said, yeah, I want you not to worry. I don't want you to get scared, but I'm about to pray for you. She's like, please just help me. I'm tired of being afraid. We need to get tired of being afraid. We get tired of being worrisome. So I walked over there and I just said, get out now. I told the ushers to open the back doors. And as they opened the back doors, the chairs started to move. And I said, I said, all the way out. And, the, and then we felt a wind leave the building. Amen. And there, her countenance was like she was bright and alive and excited again. Her grades have improved. Come on. Come on. Yeah, that's good. But that's what God does. That's that's what God does. Amen? Amen. The last thing I want to tell you is we need to mix what I'm preaching with faith. Yeah. Mix it with faith. Yeah. The Bible says this. 
I love this scripture. I think I read this every healing service too. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. That's in Hebrews 4.2. We got to mix the words that you're hearing right now with faith. How do you do that? When I was in India, there was this, you know, when you're over in India or any of the places, Pastor Will, you know this, Pastor Dave, you know this as well. You're leaving, everybody's trying to shake your hands. You're like a little rock star. You're walking by, and you're like, everybody's ah, excited and stuff. They're just excited you came to the village. Don't get too big of a head. <laughs> so I'm like just shaking hands and shaking hands, shaking hands, like, nice to see you. I know they don't even understand me. I'm just trying to shake hands. And all of a sudden, my hands stop shaking, and so this young lady puts it in her ear. And it's other, then she took my other hand. I'm like, okay, what's going on? She puts it on the other ear. And then she goes like this. She was deaf. And her friend's like, she's deaf. I'm like, I think I got that. I think I got it. <laughs> so, so I started to pray for her. And every word I prayed, she started to repeat she was healed. Instantly. Why? Because she, she mixed it with faith, not even being able to hear the words. Yeah. But she had faith. She had faith to get up there and to get it. She had faith to say, I don't know what he's saying, but I know. And I know I speak too quick for them to do, lips, <laughs> do lip reading. But they, she knew that she can be healed if she just got my attention. Amen. That is what God wants us to do. We need to mix it with faith. If a young lady that came here mixes it with faith, then how much more can you who can hear? Yeah. That sounds like King James. Anyway. <laughs> And I'll do one more thing, okay? If I've got time for that, just one more thing and we're done. Miracles will happen when we do something we don't want to. Naaman. That's all we got to say. Naaman. Remember Naaman in the Bible. Naaman went to to the prophet. The prophet didn't come out, sent his servant. Didn't give Naaman the time of day. But just said, just tell him to go dip himself in the dirtiest river there is. All right? And what happened with Naaman? The Bible says... Naaman was full of rage. God will always push your buttons. Come on. He knew how to push Naaman's buttons. Even though Naaman had the leprosy, he was respected. He would walk in and everybody would stand up and salute him. He was, he was second hand to the king. He had this value. And he leaned on that value. He did. Because of his deformity and his sickness, he was a little bit prideful. And that's what, that's what got him. He goes, what do you mean? He, I traveled all this way with all these donkeys and all this stuff, and he ain't coming out? Get out of here. Let's get out of here. You can't receive anything from God when you're angry. Miracles will happen when you stop getting angry. When you stop saying, why did you put this on me? Why? Why did you pick me to carry this? Why? Well, God didn't give it to you. Praise God. Come on. He didn't give it to you. He can't give you a good gift and give you a bad gift. He's not that kind of God. Amen? So what happened with Naaman? Well, when his servant came by and said, Master, if you uh, gave you a hard thing to do, wouldn't you do it? Yes. He gave you a simple thing. And he went, swallowed his pride, Everybody say, swallow your pride. pride. And he went over there and he he dipped and he was immediately, everybody say immediately. Immediately. He was immediately healed. It is easy to get things from God when you keep your emotions out of it. It's good to scream, it's good to holler, but it's better to believe. Come on, on. I was growing up Pentecostal, I know all that. Mm. I mean, they like taking off. I don't know. It's like they're, they're busier than the airport. They're everybody flying around. The head head. <laughs> you remember that? It's like, man, tra- traffic control lost it here. They're like everywhere just buzzing. Yeah, I, I was brought up in that. I was brought up in that. But I tell you what, it is easier just to believe. The other day I, I told my wife, and I even told the prayer people as well, that I just, I, when I see something when sick, I just pray for them. Now, either their faith's going to heal them, God's going to have grace and heal them. Or the prayer of faith and the gift of faith that God puts in me is going to heal them. That all happens three different ways, four different ways. So I went and, and I would just pray for people. I told you that before. Denny's, I'd pray for people. I was at a, at a 
I spoke at a, at a little speaking engagement. I was speaking over there, and, and they had me pray in a restaurant, a Mexican restaurant over there off of Bissonette. And all these people were laying around the, the, laying around the floor because they're all just praying for them to keep falling and praying on them. I don't like sickness. I hate it. You need to get to the point where you hate sin and you hate sickness. You better be hating sin. And if you hate sin, you got to have the same hate for sickness. And you got to look at people with compassion. Amen. And I seen those things the other day. My wife was just she finished her um, her respiratory um, or was her shift at the hospital, and she was having foot problems, and like the back of her heel was just hurting and and hurting and. And I'm just, you know, just finished showering and about to go to bed. And she keeps, like, moving around in bed. I'm like, what's wrong? She goes, my foot hurts. I'm like, woman. <laughs> I'm King James. I'm King James. Yes. Woman, you got a healing man of God right here. And you're going to complain about your feet? <laughs> we ain't got to be in no service. Amen? We just got to be in faith. Yeah. We just got to be in faith. Yeah. Anytime, anywhere faith is applied, God will do it. And I went over there, and I just, I just, I got out of bed. I stretched her feet. I smacked her, her foot. I smacked the other foot. I go, tell me how you feel. I feel a little better. I pulled it again. <laughs> I moved him around. I shook him. And I said, be healed. And I don't know if she's ready to go to bed or what, but she said that it didn't bother her no more. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, prayingly, I believe she was healed. And you know what? And I always claim, and I want you to remember the scripture, Nahum 1 9. Everybody say, Nahum 1 9. It shall not return a second time. It shall, everybody say it. It shall not return a second time. We didn't cast it off, broke it off, kicked it out of here for it to come visit you later on. Amen? We believe that God got this done permanently, and it's done. Amen. Everybody stand up, please. You're listening to David Yanez Ministries Healing Services. Brought to you by David Yanis Ministries.net.